The content on this channel and podcast represent the opinions of Christy and Tara, as well as any guests that they may have on the show or website. The content here should not be taken as medical, mental health, or legal advice. The content here is for informational purposes only. And because each person is so unique, please consult your mental health care professional for your mental health questions. Views and opinions expressed in the podcast and on this channel are our own and do not represent that of our places of work. While we make every effort to ensure that the information we share is accurate, we welcome any comments, suggestions, or correction of errors. And we encourage listeners to do their own research and utilize the sources that we provide in the show notes of each episode. Finally, privacy is of utmost importance to us. All people, places, and scenarios mentioned in the podcast or on the channel have been changed or left out to protect confidentiality unless express permission has been provided. Welcome. Welcome to Rise to Being. I'm Christy. And I'm Tara. And this episode today is all about finding a therapist. So important. Everybody needs to be in therapy. (laughs) Everyone has issues they can work out in therapy. True. Absolutely truth. So and there's sometimes... nothing wrong with therapy. I mean, again, like I, it just has such a, ne- I mean, I think it's getting more and more accepted to go to therapy, but it, it is not, um, it doesn't mean you're crazy. It doesn't mean your life is a mess. It truly is just for better living. So um, I'll be blunt with you. Most people come to therapy when they're in the middle of crisis. That makes sense. And um, it takes us a while to stabilize So if you come to us when you're just having some dysfunctional thoughts or feelings, then we've got a head start. You know, we don't, we don't have to work on stabilization. We can go straight to the good stuff, pulling up the roots. So, um, yeah, I wish, you know, you don't want to, um, if you're full on in to really some dysfunctional behavior, it's going to take a little time for stabilization. So you get a head start when you come before the crisis. And I did not. So I, um, you know, I, again, I've been in crisis my whole life. I, I have BPD. Um, but I will say that I sought out therapy for the first time on my own about a year and a half ago. Well, no, that's not true, actually. I did, okay, so, you know, in a previous episode, we mentioned how I gained and lost 100 pounds um, all within a year. And at that point when the weight was coming so fast. Um, I do also struggle with binge eating eating disorder. Um, That is a diagnosis that I am currently, it might be resurfacing resurfacing to an extent, but it's one that I had worked through previously and I sought out a therapist um, that specialized in um, disordered eating. And she was amazing. I so enjoyed working with her. She helped me to truly see the dysfunction of diet culture and actually helped me to maintain my weight for uh, several years. Um, You know, again, everybody always thinks weight loss is a goal, but at that point when I was so, so dysfunctional with my eating, to maintain a weight was something I had never done. I was up and down and up and down and up and down. I lost 100 pounds, I don't know, four times probably prior to this. And so that was huge. The second time I sought out therapy, I was... um, having some serious issues at, you know, at work and just being unhappy and just, again, generally knowing that I probably needed to talk to someone. And then finally, most recently when I saw a therapist, I was in a true BPD crisis. So, Okay. Um, the very first thing that I ask a client when they are meeting with me and client versus patient, those are two different models one so they are moving the um therapists are moving more toward a medical model and that is ideally what we would like because that takes away um i guess the stigma you don't get upset when you go get your diabetes checked Mm -hmm. um you know you know to seek out a doctor's care when you have strep throat so moving to a medical model, you'll hear um, therapists call um, people patients. My next patient. Okay. Patient stated, you know, that sort of thing. I like that. Um, I haven't gotten used to it yet. I still, um, I use a client a lot. And to me, it, um, maybe it's because I'm a social worker. Um, 
but as a clinical social worker, I really want that rapport. And so client gives me the... Um, it, it, more, it insinuates there's a relationship mm -hmm. as and, opposed to a one-off. Right. I consider myself working for them. Mm -hmm. You're paying me. I work for you. This is your hour. This is your time. Um, so I kind of like the idea of um, continuing to use client. But that will be the very first thing. You know, medical model versus, um, you know, past therapy model. I don't know what client would be. Okay. Um, but with my clients, um, if we ask the question, have you ever had outpatient therapy before? And if they say yes, I want to know what did you like about it? What didn't you like about it? I'm not asking for um, you to critique that therapist. I'm saying what worked for you or what didn't work for you because you already have a head start. Now, for those who have never been to a therapist before, then we talk a little bit more about my approach, my therapeutic um, theories that I practice from. And you'll notice throughout this episode, I am a client, she's a therapist. So we're going to have very differing ideas on on how this whole thing works. So just prepare yourself for that throughout this episode. Um, based on what you just said, so when I, the first time I saw the ther a therapist, I truly had no idea. The second time I had a little bit clearer picture of what I was looking for. And then the last time I did go in and I started critiquing my therapist because like she just said, like that's what I thought the you know Stephanie was asking me and I was like well I liked that she did this and I did not like that she did this and I needed her to do more of this and so Stephanie helped me distill that no, down that's that is fair I do want you to do that what I'm saying is you will never have a therapist tell you we will never say that's that's bad therapy that's that's part of our ethical guidelines. Oh, okay. So we're just not, um, we are not in competition. We all work in conjunction. One therapist will build on another therapist. Um, it That's the way it's supposed to be. So we are all in partnership. What you needed at that time might not be what you got, but that's a good fit for someone else. And that's what, when so, she yeah. helped me distill it down, she's like, you need someone that, that will challenge you. And yes, absolutely. Christy jokes with me that I want to get a gold star in therapy. And she's like, anytime you talk to a therapist, that's the first thing I want you to tell them, you're going to try to get a gold star in therapy. You're always go going to want to give them the answer that you want or that you think that they, they want. True. Right. And um, that's not getting the most out of therapy. Um, but so... Y'all aren't going to know, or maybe you will. I apologize to those who do. But um, the therapeutic approach, what theories we practice from, um, I like when people ask me that question. I disclose that with no issue at all because we should all be eclectic. You're going to pull from Bowen's family system. You're going to pull from um, Beck's CBT. You're going to pull from... Um, oh gosh, I'm y'all DBT. Now, there's no so other things. Got to, um, <laughs> behavioral I'm model. I don't know. Taking words my that she clinical, said. my clinical test, my uh, licensure can test. Can we back up real quick? Christy, actually, she another distinction that you made, even aside from approaches, is just qualifications. Whether you're seeing an LCSW or whether you're seeing a psychologist or where you're seeing a LPC. counselor, LPC. So can you talk so, a little bit about that? Absolutely, great point. LCSW is what I am, a licensed clinical social worker. What you're going to get with a social worker is, um, okay, I'll give you an example. Um, if a client is experiencing um, some trauma from a recent car accident, we actually um, sat in that person's car getting that person used to um, it was a new car um, because the other one was totaled. Mm -hmm. And so we sat in the car um, getting used to it again, gaining confidence in this is how to turn the radio while you're driving. That's how to, you know, lower the window. Um, and this, I, I don't want to limit any of us. I work, I think there's just, um, there's an MSW where I work and then I'm the LCSW. And an MSW is? Um, they're just at the master's level. They've already graduated from grad school, but they haven't become fully licensed. Okay. So um, they're working on their licensure. Um, for 
for social workers, we actually have two stages for licensure. You graduate as an MSW. Okay. Then you immediately can take a test to become an LMSW. And then all of these acronyms are going to change with what state you're in. True story. So um, an LMSW is a licensed master of social work. Okay. Then the highest level after getting all your hours and taking another really and hard test. And by hours, test, you mean client contact hours? Mm-hmm, three years for social workers. Um, that is licensed clinical social worker. Okay. And that's what I am, an LCSW. I want to give one more example of the LCSW kind of work. When yeah. I was working with, um, in the binge uh, eating recovery program, she was an LCSW. And another thing, like Christy said, the car example, for me, um, it was more, we would meet at a local park and she would have me walk and we would do like um, very sensory because, you know, again, eating is, is, is very sensory driven so we would work like out in the community we would go by the river we would sit on the rock we would talk about things in that setting and talk about how to utilize those things it was just very much hands-on exploratory just a lot more holistic i guess i i would agree with that now um you are going to find lcsws who probably should have been LPCs. You're gonna find LPCs, which are a licensed professional counselor. You're gonna find LPCs who probably should have been social workers. That's not Stephanie. <laughs> I feel like she, she is an LPC, but she is so holistic in her thinking. And guys, obviously I chose LCSW. I did the research. That is what I wanted to be. Um, so of course I'm biased. I think LCSWs are the best. But do I think that I'm a better therapist than um, like our clinical director at, you know, at the place I work? No, he's an LPC. God help him. We love Dale. (laughs) Dale is amazing. Dale will definitely be a guest. He is a doll. So, um, you know, he's an LPC. Um, So it doesn't, you know, the distinctions. And then you have LMFTs, Licensed Marriage Family Therapists. Um, I promise you they do better work with couples and families than, well, I do good family work, but she couples does great work on everything, hate but marriage counseling. Okay. Um, cause y'all come in too late guys. Y'all come in when the decision <laughs> is made. Um, and so it's just helping to have an amicable divorce after that. So if you came in before there was a problem. Life would be great. I'd, I, I'd enjoy working with y'all. Fair point. Um, so, yes, finding, you know, again, um, I to me the distinction is significant because I worked so hard to choose what do I want to do, what do I want to focus on, and how, what licensure, what type of ther- therapist would best fit what I want to do for a living. And that's where I came to LCSW. So again, I'm biased. I'm going to be fair in saying that. Um, But um, I think you can find a quality therapist. We are all held to high, high ethical standards. And the good thing, um, you know, I feel like because as therapy becomes more, um, Wide, I mean, I don't want to say widespread, but more accepted, then therapists are having to do a little bit more work to market themselves. And in doing so, though, they're they're giving you be- a better glimpse into who they are before you ever even schedule something yeah, you with them. Definitely. Uh, like I said, we are eclectic. I will use I will use DBT, even though I hate their acronyms. DBT makes me a little nuts. I don't like it. Um, it I, but absolutely, I will do DBT. I will do CBT. I, you should be experienced in all these different theories. Um, but when you're lost as a therapist, mm-hmm. when you are, you you feel like um, you're just circling with this client, go back to your roots. Every therapist should have a theory that they have really defined as their level of expertise. And you know, I'll say as a as a client, you know, you're not, again, I didn't know what any of this meant. I just knew when I was working with the therapist before Stephanie, that this wasn't it for me. The, the, what she was offering, the theories that she was operating under 
didn't work for what I was looking for. So in therapy. ask the therapist on your very first session, ask the therapist, what theories do you practice from and can you explain them? And so my, my two, my go-to is um, psychodynamic, which means everything is patterned and we continue this pattern over and over and over again until we have some resolution. Um, in its most simplistic sense, it's why girls marry their father and boys marry their mother. Fair. So it's, you know, it's those unresolved relationships that you continue to recreate, re-victimizing yourself until you solve the problem. Um, and then the other, obviously, in what we first talked about, CBT. CBT, CBT, CBT. <laughs> I love cognitive behavior therapy. Okay. I think, again, and when, when you really get to the root of all of these theories, your therapist is either working on thoughts, feelings, feelings or behaviors. Okay. So, um, you know, I mentioned Dale. Hey, Dale. Um, he's amazing. We are as different in therapy as you could possibly be. And she was she would say this to me, and I didn't necessarily leave her because I sort of like therapists are all sort of in the same box. But the other day, after Christina passed, we were um, all in town, and we sat down with Dale just to have a conversation. And just the way he led us through that conversation is so different than how Christy would have. He was... Christy's a little sassy, if you haven't gathered that. And Dale was just so calm. He's so stoic. And yes, very stoic, very non-judgmental, very. So if you totally love Dale's style. therapy, you will not like my therapy. You would not. If you like my therapy, you will not like Dale's. So um, that's the most distinctive, and he is amazing at what he does. Yeah. So it's not. It's not. It's not black and white. It's not. It's not who's good and bad. It's not who's worthy and who's not. It's, it's meshes what, with you. Yeah, it, what works for you. You tell me that, you know, you just slept with your ex-boyfriend for the eighth time. I'm going to go, Ooh. You're right. And Dale's, Dale's going to ask gonna you a like, question. Hmm, okay, tell me a little more. Okay. That's hilarious. And, you know, That's I, my Dale impression. So that was kind of just like a brief, like, just conglomeration of crap but since we're 15 minutes in let's try and get a little bit more um i guess a, like a logical approach to this so when you decide hey it's time i'm ready to i'm ready to go see a therapist first and foremost look at your insurance Ooh, good, so good point therapy most therapists are going to want to see you weekly initially it takes a while to build rapport and we'll talk about rapport in a little bit mm -hmm. but um so that's a big financial investment Find a therapist um, that your, your insurance has um, credentialed. Right. If you have a high deductible, you can work with your therapist to... So we sign a contract with those insurance companies to say, we will collect the deductible. You, We will also collect the co-pays. We sign a contract. So... Because I work for a not-for-profit counseling agency um, for all these years, what we do is get financial letters. We, it is unethical in our profession to refuse service based on ability to pay. So all we have to do is have some sort of written um, contract that says you're going to do your best to pay your deductible and co-pays. Okay. Um, so, but reflect on that. I want you to find one that you can afford. Um, and there are not-for-profit counseling agencies out there. There are um, uh, community service boards, which gets federal funding to provide therapy. Money should never be a reason that you do not get therapy. I love that. And, you know, again, just to give you an idea of how much therapy has cost for me in the past, uh, the previous, the, the therapist before Stephanie uh, was unable to bill through my insurance, but gave me a discounted rate. And so it was about $35 a session with Stephanie. Uh, it averages about 18. It's a little bit less than that. I'm thinking, you know, I've met my deductible for the year. And so we're somewhere around $15 a session at this point that I'm paying out of pocket. Obviously my insurance company is, is paying Stephanie a significant uh, well, I say significant. Uh, more than, you know, more than 15. And that is something that you need to talk with your therapist about. Um, if I see somebody come in with, like, at the beginning of the year, they've got to pay $5,000 before their insurance kicks in, 
we're going to talk immediately because we bill at about 110 130 dollars an hour mm -hmm. um I wish I knew the exact amount because maybe we sound really cheap or maybe we sound really <laughs> expensive. But um, the insurance company is only going to give us a portion of that. So, you know, we might talk to you about, you know, maybe you don't want us to file your insurance. Right. Maybe you want to just work with because us. Because it one is on a, one. like, you know, it, pa cash pay is preferable. Mm -hmm. They don't have to worry about the approval, they don't have to worry about the submission. So it is. It incentivizes um, therapists in some situations, especially when they're they're small or they're handling their own kind of billing work, that they would take a lower price for so, cash pay. But that is something. Okay, guys, talk with your therapist. Paying therapists create boundaries. We are an example um, for you to operate at a high level of functioning. So in the therapeutic office. That is the place to talk about finances. Remember when we talked about in one of the um, previous episodes about ADLs? Activities for daily living. Mm -hmm. So obviously paying bills, being consistent with payment, um, budgeting, all of that qualifies. So um, talk with your therapist. Ask them, what is your expectation? I want to see my clients weekly. I would rather, if you can only afford in your budget $40, your copay is $40, and you can only afford it once a month, then I would rather see you four times at $10 than once a month at $40. That makes sense. So, but again, ask your clinician. I'm not setting these rules for everybody else. Everybody else has their own boundaries and their own purpose with um, how they want to operate there. And it is not about judgment. Mm -hmm. um, my husband would really, mm -hmm. you know, really, really not want me to advertise the fact that you, you know. would take less than yeah. <laughs> okay so um again we've got to pay bills too and you know tara mentioned something about free consultations when we were talking about this episode and i was like no um actually intakes are the the most expensive part we right. invest a lot in that initial meeting um but i mean a 10 minute introduction to see if you vibe with me Okay. And that's kind of where, I mean, okay, so Christy, again, is stepping ahead because she's, again, the therapist, the client. So we've looked at our insurance. We've list, we've seen the list of the therapists that are in our network. So what are we going to do now? We are going to do some research. We're going to Google. Do they have a website? Do they have a link? Can we read more about them? I will be perfectly honest. One of the reason that I scheduled something with Stephanie for the first time is that her website is fire. It, the marketing, the branding was right up my alley. Allie, I'm a package whore, and her shit was cute. And that is why I was like, you know what? I think I'm going to like this girl. Obviously, there was a little more to it, but read about the person. So I guess this kind of goes into the rapport portion when you're um, even just scheduling that initial session. Read about them. Where did they go to school? Um, what are their values? What are their beliefs? What is their background? When I was reading about Stephanie and it was talking about that she um, went to a through a mindfulness based therapy program out of Boulder, Colorado, I know that I'm very socially liberal and I was like, oh my lordy. And with my yoga too, mindfulness, she had me. Like that was one of the key words I like to see. My husband, I was helping him try and look for a therapist and he obviously, he had so many qualifications. It was ridiculous. But he didn't want anybody that had anything um, that was related to, um, no, he wanted someone that had men's issues. And I was like, is that even a thing? But he wanted something, someone yes. that like, specifically stated that they worked with men or um, focused on men's issues as one of their specialties. So, um, yes, you're going to have men who specifically want a woman. And you're going to have a woman, actually. You're going to have men who specifically want men. You're going to have women who specifically want a man. I did not want a man. They don't listen at all. <laughs> so, <laughs> you Sorry. have met Dale. That was, what was <laughs> that? What kind of, that was one of my overgeneralizing. Yes, very good. So, um you definitely have to um, ask the right questions. Now, I again, from the social worker perspective, if I have a, um, let's say, a uh, homosexual man of color come into my office, mm -hmm. I'm going to disclose. Um, so, obviously, I um, present as a Caucasian female, mm -hmm. um, I'm married to a man. Um, 
I'm in, you know, a, a heterosexual relationship, there are going to be things that I have never experienced that you have. Right. It is not your job to educate me, but I really appreciate it. If I get something wrong or if I'm not identifying something um, that is, um, oh gosh, uh, like microaggressions, um, micro racism or, or that systematic racism, stuff like that, that kind of, um, little, little comments that I would never pick up because of your background that's, experience. Right, that is my, your I, lens. right, my lens. And so, um, I immediately, we talk about ways that we're the same, talk about ways that we're different. I acknowledge the differences um, and ask for any help that they can provide at their level of comfort. You want somebody like that, I promise. Right. Because if their lens is too different, y'all are never going. If I can only tell you uh, what it's like, you know, if you, um, if I'm using examples that are heteronormative, well above, right? yeah. you know, <laughs> white suburban housewife examples. But I don't. But yes, she if if I'm if I'm telling you um, all the examples that you cannot connect with, we are not a good fit for each other. That makes sense. Um, like child, y'all being someone that doesn't have children like if i if everything i'm reading on their the therapist website is is about families and children like i i just already know that like it's not going to work for me because the examples that she's going to have are all going to be child focused i don't have a child i i can't understand that and i am okay with understanding that but i know it's not going to work for me um so i want you to identify what is how you identify yourself mm. And that is important. Right. Um, I'm also, can I give another example? Mm -hmm. I hate to interrupt again, but like religious. I'm sorry. She doesn't hate to interrupt. I don't at all. Um, I'm not religious at all. And so if I look in Christian or faith-based faith -based counseling is one of the first things that they're talking about. Again, I, that's another thing that I know that's not going to align with what I'm looking for. Right. Sorry. Okay. So um, rapport. Is it ready for, is it Okay. Before we, so the first, then after you've done this, most therapists have some sort of like con consultation process where you're interviewing them, they're interviewing you to an extent, to put it real simple. And in this consultation, don't be like, oh gosh, I hope they say that they'll work with me. You need to be asking them questions too. You need to make sure that the rapport is there and you should have that opportunity before you're having, you know, to commit to a certain number of sessions or anything like that. Make sure that they're gonna work for you, you're gonna work for them. So Christy, more on rapport. Please. Okay. Um the rapport, you know, every clinician is different. Um, but I will say trust is the basis of a rapport. I have to trust that um, you will be as honest with me as you are ready to be. And um, you have to trust me with your vulnerability. You have to trust me to open up. Um, I... I have one or um, client, um, a teenager, um, I teared up at something that they were um, revealing to me and I acknowledged my tears and I said, um, it is not your job to make me feel better. I am experiencing this with you and therefore I'm crying with you. Mm -hmm. um, and the teenager was like, no, that's fine. I don't even really think of you as a person with feelings. Like, you're just my therapist. That's hilarious. And that was actually the best compliment I have ever gotten. Okay. So much of my personality is tied into my therapy, mm -hmm. the therapy I provide, that to have that um, response that it meant that I am doing something right with that client. Okay. Now, again, not all of them think that I'm just therapist robot but um it really is that's a compliment that i can meet the needs with them not worrying about mine right never in the same way that you you should never worry about what your therapist is thinking i promise you we've heard 
It all. It, it all. It all. And, um, it, yeah, it just didn't, like, to kind of, you know, build on the rapport, the therapist that I saw before Stephanie, I used the Psychology Today, which I've mentioned before, we'll include a link in the show notes, to find a therapist, because, again, you can, uh, the therapist can delineate the types of therapy that they utilize and some of the specialty groups that they work with. Just on paper, my previous therapist and Stephanie were identical. They were super socially liberal based on what I saw. They were not faith-based. It was very, very similar. However, the, the, that other therapist, I probably saw her, saw her for 10 sessions. And she, I liked her. It just I wasn't getting enough out of it. And so then when I did my initial consult with Stephanie, it was 15 minutes. And in that 15 minutes with Stephanie, we had such great rapport that I got more out of that 15 minutes than I had from the 10 previous sessions. So just because someone seems to fit on paper, you're going to know. You're mm-hmm. going to know, and hopefully it will take you 8 to 10 sessions well, to figure it out. <laughs> what I ask is give every therapist three sessions. I like that. Because your initial nervousness, um, the questions, you're not going to get the vibe the first time. Mm-hmm. Um, the second time you're gonna get it a little bit more, but if you don't have it by the third time, it's not gonna no work. more investment. Yeah. That's cut it off after the third time. I like that. Um, so give every therapist three visits, cool. um, and also your readiness for therapy. Um, my daughter, uh, one of my daughters, I'm not gonna disclose which one. Um, she comes out of one therapist's office and she goes, "I'm not going back to her." And I said, "Okay, why?" She was wearing sandals without a pedicure, and that is just gross. Oh, Guys, I know exactly which child. It's <laughs> it sometimes that's all all you need. Mm-hmm. Um, and if that's all you're going to focus on in the in the therapy, then that's all you need. <coughs> Move on. Yep. Let's find somebody else. Um, and she ended up finding somebody that worked really well for her. So um, probably pedicured. <laughs> yeah. Probably, probably. Um, I also want you to think about your goals ahead of time. Now, that doesn't mean do the work of therapy before you get a therapist. What I'm saying is you go to a doctor Mm -hmm. and you know that your throat is no longer going to hurt if that visit is effective. Okay. So what I say is, how are you going to know therapy is working? What do you want to see in, I always say six months, but if you go to a behaviorist, they're going to say, what do you want to see in a month? Mm -hmm. I want to know what you'll see in six months. Um, What are you going to see in a how do you know therapy is working? And that's how we define your goal. Okay. Very yeah. interesting. And I do, I mean, Stephanie took me through that process as well. I have no idea what I said. We've gone on so many tangents since then. I don't know. I just, I love my therapist. I want that for everybody. Y'all, like, just to know <laughs> that, you know, to know that there's a person that is disinterested, that they, and I say disinterested, meaning they have no stake in what decisions you make, what your outcomes are. They are a neutral party. They don't know these other people you're talking about. Like, it's just so refreshing to be able to just open up to that extent and just be like, this is me. This is what I'm thinking, feeling, how I'm behaving. And, oh my God, help me. Instead of um, having someone, because I can't, okay, well, Full disclosure, I begged this bitch to be my therapist forever. I know how good she is. I know. She's been my best friend for 20 years. She's fucking amazing. So I I, I was like, I'm never going to find anybody as good as you. I'm never going to find anybody that I click with like you, that I can be honest with, that understands me. Like, this was a battle for years. Years. It is unethical. It is unethical. I can, cannot be her therapist. Plus, I can I only mean, be her best friend. She's also very G. Let's tell her best friend's behavior. Yeah, what she does. <laughs> yes. So when I did finally meet, you know, the right person, my right therapist, it is, again, it's so refreshing because I don't have to include her in all of ev- every bit of drama and that I And I get have. to be best friend. Exactly. I get to say, where are we burying the body? Because a therapist shouldn't be burying a body Correct. with you. Correct. Um, Okay, I one more point I want to make before we close out, and then if it opens up something else for you. But um, the last thing that I want to say for certain is online versus in person. Okay, I am um, I am a proponent now. Now I am certified for telehealth. During COVID, telehealth was an amazing resource. 
but I will never be the telehealth therapist as I say this online to you. But it's because of the ADHD. Um, mm -hmm. In part, And is. Tara keeps me on track. I think if it were just you and me, um, yeah, I'd be all over the place. So telehealth is not my favorite format. Um, I want to see you. I want to see your face. I want to see your body language. I want to see if your arms are like this or if you're opened up. I want to see one of the very first things um, with my female clients um, that carry purses, <laughs> so very specific, the minute they have taken the strap off and fully sat back in their chair, I know rapport has been built. How can I ever get that from online? Mm -hmm. So um, you're either good at online or it's just a bridge until you can come in the office. Um, so there are great online resources, but make sure you are getting the therapy you deserve. And if you are high risk for dying by suicide, if you have suicidal ideation, self-harm, um, harmful thoughts about others, please invest in an in-person therapist, please. Um, and what that brings up for me is so, so when I was right. looking for my therapist, I needed someone that was telehealth. At that time, this last, when I found Stephanie, um, because of my job, I was unable to get off during the day at all to make time for therapy. She could do virtual sessions. She was willing to do them at noon during my lunch hour. Um, it works for us. She is in the same state I am. She's about an hour and a half away from me. So she, in the beginning, she's like, yes, we can stick to telehealth, but know that I'm here. If we need to schedule some weekend in-person sessions and just kind of do a chunk of things at one time, if you want to come into the office one day, like she was very open and I knew that was an option for me because I am BPD, because again, BPD is one of those, um, you know, the high risk for suicide. I did want someone that was close enough, but telehealth works for us right now. It is going well. I know that she's there. I, I cannot wait to meet her in person eventually but um telehealth does work and it mm -hmm. can work especially mm -hmm. if that's what fits with what you you know what you're working with i'd rather you have telehealth than none and oh absolutely mm -hmm. me too i just want you to understand that there are some people who are more gifted in telehealth and some people who are going to be looking at the things that are going on behind you right or like, their notifications you know, yes. on their phone or Guys, something. yes so <laughs> i mean it just uh, you know, if, if you're going to pay the same amount, get the most out of it that you can. Yes. And so hopefully your therapist will be honest and say, you know, I'm somewhat limited in this. You know, I'm ADHD, I'm going to be really distracted unless you're in a private, safe space that you've disclosed to me. And I can trust that you will be completely honest with me. And that's that's hard to do. I The only telehealth that I do is with previous clients okay. or clients that come in every now and then and then do telehealth every now and then okay. because I can then read them a little bit better. The um, but that's just, again, it's a skill set. Find a skill set that works for you. And y'all, is this is this episode especially of all the ones we've done so far, this is where we need questions from you. Because this is these are the things that came up for us when we talked about how we believe that you should find a therapist. But if you're, you know, having trouble or you don't understand some of the process, or well, I they say they do this, what does this even mean? This is a great way for you, a, a great episode for you to come and ask questions. We'll be happy to answer those, do everything we can to help you get hooked up with somebody that can um, be as great for you as Stephanie is for me or be as great as Christy, it's hard to do. Um, definitely want your feedback, guys. Remember, ask all the questions. Um, Follow us on socials. Mm -hmm. We really look forward to revisiting this with your specific questions. Absolutely. So thanks, guys. All right, great. Y'all have a good one. See you next time. Do deep breathing. Find a freaking therapist. Make an appointment. Make Bye. an appointment.